go to google and type rathods is then you can see our website rathods is academy there you have to click on login or register in the blue color so if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details so after once you have login click on the courses there you can see course list and in this course list you can see wide range of courses hi this is usha welcome to rathod's is classes today in this lecture we are going to see current affairs of 25th june 2022 so let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see first topic so this first topic which is mainly talking about abortion rights of usa so actually recently us supreme court which mainly overturned one important judgment regarding this abortion rights in usa that is roe versus war case okay so why it is in news actually since may 2022 onwards we are seeing this case that is seen highly in news because there was some leak of information regarding this overturning of this uh, judgment so because of this this is in news and actually now supreme court came up with verdict and in this verdict it mainly overturned this judgment of roe versus war case so because of this this is a news and now let us try to see what is this case about and what is the implication of this judgment and what is this Roe versus Ward case, Ward judgment and we are going to talk about even one important law that is Mississippi law. So here this article says that yes Supreme Court overturned this abortion right case that is Roe versus Ward in 1973. Actually this case which mainly led to giving of some abortion rights for women and they can go for abortion till there is a fetal viability that means so whenever fetus which is mainly coming outside it will have some capability to survive so when it is having the survivability that is after 28 weeks normally so here because of the recent advancement we can say that between this 23 to 24 weeks also we can see fetal viability okay so here this is the case but now what happened here supreme court of usa which mainly came up with overturning of this judgment so because of this overturning of this judgment now here abortion rights are left to states so now here these abortion rights they are mainly determined by the individual states so one cause of concern here is more than 20 states uh, some 20 states they have been restricting this bearing of abortion and according to data here it mainly says that 13 states they have the laws banning this abortion procedure so because of this there is wide range of protests which are mainly happening so after this judgment which is mainly came into picture so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that u.s supreme court on friday took a dramatic step of overturning this landmark judgment of 1973 roe versus ward ruling so here this Roe versus Ward ruling which mainly said that woman has a constitutional right to abortion and it is mainly legalized in the nationwide. So because of this is one of the victory for the Republicans and as well as religious conservatives who want to limit okay. So who want to limit this ban on this procedure. So now if you are talking about this article it mainly says that US Supreme Court which mainly overturned this judgment of Roe versus Ward with the 6 by 3 majority and actually this case which mainly talks about abortion right so abortion as a constant right for women so if we're talking about details regarding this judgment so in 1973 so there was a landmark judgment in USA that is Roe versus Ward judgment so in this judgment here Supreme Court of United States made a right to abortion as a constitutional right and in this case here US Supreme Court stuck down the laws which mainly made abortion illegal in several states and they came up with one important concept that is point of fetal viability so that means so the time after which fetus can survive outside the womb so if you have gone through some news uh, papers or news uh, in the TVs then you might see that uh, so there is a premature baby uh, she survived at the month of fifth right so in a way here viability means nothing but once fetus which is coming out out of this mother womb so whether that fetus has the capability to survive or not so that is called as fetal viability so this fetal viability which is mainly found around 28 weeks that is seven months 
okay so in seven months also number of women they will be going for delivery there is pre term uh, delivery okay pre mature baby they will be getting right but what happens so they will be automatically recovered so your experts mainly say is that because of advances in our science and technology yes we got number of medicines number of equipment especially such that the threshold of this uh, fetal viability which can be decreased to 23 to 24 weeks that is even 6 months or less than 6 months so fetal viability is often seen in uh, seen as a point at which this right of women can be separated from the rights of unborn fetus so because of this judgment now here the decision of this abortion which is mainly left to the states because there is no constitutional right which is mainly talking about in the constitution of america it is not talking about this abortion rights and if you're talking about present case so the present case which mainly pertains challenging of this mississippi law on abortion so actually the state of mississippi which mainly came up with law of abortion on in this 2018 okay it mainly says that after 15 weeks so much before fetal viability we cannot go for abortion and even in 2019 it mainly came up with some update right like heartbeat so abortion law mainly passed in this mississippi and it mainly said that even once cardiac activity of fetus which is mainly detected so after once this fetal cardiac activity is detected we can't go for abortion right so if you're talking about fe heart beat of the fetus that can be detected from six weeks onwards that is just one and a half month so the heart beat law said physicians who performed this abortion after once this fetal heartbeat was detected they could have their medical licenses will be revoked so if we're talking about what will be the impact so since there is no proper federal law which is mainly protecting right of abortion in us so that will leads to the states will have power to come up with their own abortion laws so this is about this topic in detail and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding draupadi murmu draupadi murmu files nomination papers so this article which is mainly talking about presidential elections so we are going to have presidential polls on this july 18th so because of this from bjb so there is one candidate she nominated okay that is draupadi murmu actually she uh, she mainly belongs from this santal from odisha so if you are talking about context it mainly says that your nda's candidate for post of president of india the name here is draupadi murmu she mainly filed her nomination papers ahead of the polls they are going to be held on july 18th so if you see details here what is the electoral college of this president so this will be very important and actually this is the one question which appeared in this 2020-22 prelims so indian president is elected through an electoral college system which mainly contains national and the state levels so here elections will be conducted by election commission of india so let me know which elections will be conducted by elections of uh, election commission of india okay so let me know who is the authority which is mainly conducting elections for panchayats and municipalities so you have to know this so this will be very important our electoral college of the uh, presidential elections they mainly contains only elected members but not nominated members so elected members of our upper house Rajya Sabha and elected members of lower house that is uh, Lok Sabha and even elected members of state legislative assemblies and even union territories that is for example you can talk about Delhi and Puducherry actually assembly of Jammu and Kashmir is not included now so we are talking about what are the constitution related provisions article 54 which mainly talks about election of president article 55 which mainly talks about manner of election of president article 56 which mainly talks about term of office of president and article 57 which mainly talks about eligibility for re-election and article 58 which mainly talks about qualifications for president for election as a president so these are some constitutional provisions that is from article 54 to article 58 of indian constitution which mainly talks about president and if you're talking about procedure so before voting first we need to go for nomination so this article says that here Draupadi Mumu she mainly nominated right so first one is nomination stage so at this nomination stage here at least 50 proposals and 50 seconders should be signed on the list and these promoters these seconders they can be anyone from the total members of electoral college that means from the national level from the state level for example Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and as well as legislative assemblies of a state 
and as well as legislative assemblies of Union territories. And if you are talking about nomination, so nomination of a candidate for election to this office of president that must be subscribed by 50 electors, 50 electors as proposers and 50 electors as seconders. And after once that is done, so yes, that candidate they need to do some security deposit of rupees 15,000 in Reserve Bank of India. And if they are getting one sixth of votes, yes, they will be going to get back their deposit. And if they are not getting that much amount of votes, means yes, that money will not be retained. So this is about this topic in detail. And now let us start to see next topic. It is regarding economy. So title says Pakistan Prime Minister, that is Sharif, he announced his 10 percent super tax on large scale industries. So actually you know that here Pakistan which is mainly facing economic crisis and the forex results of this Pakistan they are coming down. So it mainly approached IMF to get some help and IMF came up with some guidelines that need to be followed. To achieve those guidelines so these are some steps which are mainly taken by this Pakistan's Prime Minister. So here we need to focus on what is the concept of super tax. So in India we have sir tax, we have sis. So they are nothing but tax on tax. So this super tax is also nothing but the tax which is imposed on tax. It is also additional tax or tax on tax. So Pakistan's Prime Minister, he announced that 10 percentage of super tax on large scale industries per se cement, steel and automobiles, they are mainly imposed. So whenever they are getting some additional tax that will helpful mainly to tackle the inflation situation and even mainly to prevent country to become bankrupt. So if you're talking about details, it mainly says that. So Pakistan came up with imposition of this 10 percentage of a super tax on large scale industries. For example, steel, sugar, cement, oil and gas, fertilizers, LNG, textiles, automobiles, cigarettes, chemicals, banking, beverages, etc. So here in this context, your Prime Minister said that they mainly came up with the super tax of 4% that will be applicable to all sectors and another 6% that will be added to this 10% for this large scale industries. So because of this, the tax rates in Pakistan now it can go from 29 to 30%. So Pakistan, which is in talks with the International Monetary Fund that is IMF and it mainly said that we are going to have some revival of 6 billion dollar financial package and to get this yes the requirement should be met so because of this this step which is mainly taken by Pakistan and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding MG Narega so here what is this article with this article which is mainly talking about use of technology in this MG Narega so this topic is very important from your GS paper to under governance so this topic which is mainly talking about new national mobile monitoring software application. It is mainly talking about national mobile monitoring software application. So recently in May, we came up with this pilot project of using this national mobile monitoring software application, which is mainly focusing on taking attendance. So based on that attendance here, salary will be given to this MG Narega workers. So now let us try to see how this app works and what are the challenges and what is the way forward. So this article will be important from your GS paper to under governance. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you see the context in May 2021, your Ministry of Rural Development, which mainly came up with this national mobile monitoring software application. And this new app, which mainly focused on improving improving citizen sight over increasing transparency okay so it is mainly focusing on improving citizen oversight and increasing transparency in this national rural employment guarantee act works so if you see here the main feature of this app here is it will focus on real time photographed geotag attendance of every worker it is mainly focusing on real time photographed geotag attendance of every workers Okay, and that to be taken once in each half day. That means in twice that can be taken. That is in the morning and as well as in the afternoon. So conditions which are mainly affecting these workers while using such app here is it is mainly focusing on monitoring the attendance of the workers 
and who have fixed work timings in the most of the states and here the wage which is mainly calculated based on the amount of work done okay so here the important thing regarding this application here is it will be focusing on attendance of these workers naturally you know that especially in some states there is some fixed work or timings that is mainly seen so because of this they are coming up with taking of attendance twice a day so that here they are going to get the salaries but here fixability has been one of the important key for this mg narega's widespread demand but now this app which mainly mandates the workers at the work site at the entire day so that it is mainly causing much difficulties especially people who are working who are having other livelihood not mainly affected because of this thing and this engineering which has historically had higher proportion of women workers that is about 54 percentage of women workers are present and here this women they mainly have to attend some more other workers like household works care work etc so because of this app which mainly disproportionately affecting the work of this women workers and the conditions for registering under this ng narega attendance on the app put both them in dilemma okay that led to keep them in dilemma so if you're talking about what are the challenges yes there are challenges whenever we are using this application so we need a stable network stable network it is very very important for going for real time monitoring so whenever there is a fluctuation that is seen in the network yes that will leads to absence of that so and so people so that that will leads to wage loss and if you are talking about way forward what can be done so instead of focusing on this app we can go for introducing other complex technological reforms and we can go for social audits so social audits they need to be strengthened and these social audits they are citizen centric institutions and where the citizens they are of panchayat have a direct role and say in how this ng narega functions in their panchayats so here instead of using this app we can go for other technological reforms and we can go for using of social audits so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says brick by brick so this article which is mainly talking about recent brick summit so here 14th brick summit which has been concluded yesterday so we are going to see some highlights of this brick summit that might be important from your mains especially the students who are going to write this year mains they have to focus on this brick summit so every year you can get three questions from this international relations so one is from our neighborhood one is from organizations and one is from bilateral relations so bricks mainly comes under organization so you can expect a question from this bricks this year so now let us try to see this article in a great detail so as you all know this 14th brick summit has been concluded and it mainly revealed that these groupings of this five energy five emerging nations they are mainly cooperating with each other so the block of this five desperate countries so which are the countries part of this brics brazil russia india china and south africa so these are the five countries which are part of this brics organization right so actually this block of five disparate okay disparate countries they has not only made it its 14th summit but it has made able to demonstrate some concrete and they came up with modest outcomes of cooperations especially in some areas like new development bank and even covid 19 vaccines etc so we're talking about major highlights the first one here is beijing declaration so it mainly states that brics mainly support talks between russia and as well as ukraine yes if you're talking about beijing declaration they said that they are mainly supporting talks between this russia and as well as ukraine and this group it is also willing to support united nations and icrc that is international committee on red cross and they are mainly focusing on some providing humanitarian assistance to this ukraine and countries they also expressed concerns about the situation in this taliban led afghanistan so it is beijing declaration and if you're talking about russia's response so russia made sarsha mainly made a unveil attack on us and european countries they are using financial mechanism to shift their own mistakes in the economic policies to the rest of the world 
so as you all know that on this russia especially western countries like us and european countries they imposed financial sanctions so russia mainly says that us and other european countries they mainly impose sanctions on russia and it is mainly to shift their own mistakes in this economic policies and if you're talking about chinese position here chinese president he mainly called on the members to reject this cold war mentality okay so chinese president mainly said that we need to reject the cold war mentality and he also opposed that what is called as us and european unions unilateral sanctions on this russia and as well as and china so on china us came up with unilateral sanctions and chinese president was also called for larger security alliance within brics right and also they proposed china in may this year okay that is a global security initiative and here this china which mainly said that this global security initiative it is to be an asian security framework and it is mainly focusing on zero sum approach with dialogues partnership and it will be like we are going to get win win situations so or win win results and if you are talking about terrorism so brics countries they reiterated that only the united nations security council has authority for imposing sanctions so for imposing sanctions only the united nations security council has authority and next one is regarding afghanistan so brics countries they mainly called for afghanistan authorities to achieve national reconciliation through dialogue and negotiation and there is one article in today's newspaper that afghanistan which is mainly getting or which is mainly asking some humanitarian help because it mainly recently hit by this uh, earthquake right and here in, on this afghanistan issue they also said that so afghanistan territory should not be used to shelter terrorists or attack any other countries so if we're talking about what is the stand of india so indian prime minister he mainly focused on importance of brics in this post pandemic global economic recovery and there is also a note on this g7 so this summit which is mainly going to uh, come just days ahead of this gs uh, g7 summit in germany so in this summit here our prime minister and even south african president they will also attend this g7 summit so once this is done we are going to discuss the details and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding united nation chief united nation chief warns food shortage catastrophe un chief warns of food shortage catastrophes so this article is important regarding gs paper to under international relations so now let us try to see this topic in a great detail so the head of united nations warned that the world faces catastrophe because of growing shortage of food around the globe so around the globe we are seeing shortage of food okay so the head of united nations they mainly warned that world mainly faces catastrophe because of growing shortages of food around the globe so we are mainly facing shortage of food around the globe so if you see details it mainly says that united nations secretary general said that the war in ukraine has added to disruptions caused by climate change the corona pandemic and inequality to produce an unprecedented global hunger crisis so he united nations secretary he mainly said that so because of this ongoing russia ukraine war and even some disruptions because of this climate change and because of this covid 19 pandemic and inequality that mainly led to global hunger crisis so because of this global hunger crisis that mainly affects hundreds of millions of people and next one is asia africa and america they will take a hit as farmers around the world they struggle to cope with rising of fertilizer and as well as energy prices so now one more problem which are mainly faced by this farmers here is especially there is very very uh, huge rise of uh, prices of this fertilizer and even energy prices had been increased so because of this we are going to face global food shortage and in this condition no country will will be become immune to social economic repercussions such as of such catastrophe so we need to be focusing on this food access issue for sure and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding invasive weed so invasive weed 17 plants stifling kaziranga so here into know where this kaziranga national park is there and some important facts regarding this kaziranga national park so already i discussed this topic number of times regarding basic facts of this kaziranga national park and i also showed number of times the map of this kaziranga 
So now it is your time to revise this topic. So this article will be important from your GS paper 3 under environment and ecology. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you see context it mainly says that vitamin D3. So vitamin D3 rich wheat and a shrub with roots that wild, wild boars love to george on are among the 18 invasive species. They are mainly seen in this Kaziranga National Park and Tiger Reserve. So what happens? So there are some weeds which are mainly seen and these weeds they have some economic significance. For example, there is high amount of vitamin D3 rich weeds are mainly seen. Okay. So now let us try to see this topic in a great detail. So if you see details, it mainly says that Kaziranga which has had to deal with encroachment, poaching, annual floods for decades. Okay, Kaziranga which had which has had to deal with encroachment, poaching and annual floods for decades. So, but none of these has been as damaging to the health of 1300 square kilometers of tiger reserve as green invaders that have gone under the radar until now. So, this article which mainly says that, so Kaziranga which mainly had to deal with encroachment, poaching and as well as annual floods for decades. Okay, and we can also see that is also leading to damaging of this health of this tiger reserve because whenever there is invasive weeds or invasive species that is mainly seen means so there will be the rapid increasing of their population and there will be no competition for them and animals which are present on in that area especially they are not going to feed on them, right? So because of this their population will be very very high and it will be having some threat on that local native species as well. So here identification of this invasive species and they documented about 18, 18 weeds are mainly seen. So because of this 18 weeds they are mainly have some impact for this indigenous grass, shrubs and as well as trees. Okay and if you are talking about some examples we have Parthenium species and as well as we have Lantana. So this Parthenium and Lantana they threaten more than 40 percentage of India's tiger reserves. And if you are talking about Parthenium. Okay, it is, uh, it is mainly believed to have come to India as a contaminants while we are getting consignment of wheat from this USA during 1950s. And lantana was brought by the British and they are mainly used as an ornamental plants from South America. Okay, and invasive plants, they are fast clogging plants in the grasslands and herbivores which are present in that area, they generally avoid eating this invasive plants. So because of this, that will lead to very, very rapid speed and even that will threaten the indigenous flora as well and sometimes they will be also having some toxic impact on the landscape and as well as underground water etc. So if we are talking about some weeds they have herbal properties but their toxicity which is mainly overweighing their utility. For example if you see we are having some succulent rootlets and these succulent rootlets they are mainly eaten by this uh, rhinos and next one here is another one is Casetrum diurnum, it is uh, also called as day blooming jasmine of West Indies origin and actually it is mainly seen in this Brahmaputra sandbar region. Actually this it is one of the best source of vitamin D3. So once modalities are finalized, so we are mainly going for uh, growing of this uh, wheat which is having this vitamin D3 as a commercial crop so that it will be helpful for getting the uh, this uh, vitamin D3 from these plants because many pharmaceutical companies they need tons and tons of these dry leaves uh, for this uh, plant periodically to get this vitamin D3. And now let us try to see some important facts regarding this invasive species. So invasive species that can be any kind of living organism for example like amphibian and as well as plants it might be insects, uh, fishes, fungus, bacteria etc. So they are not native to ecosystem, that ecosystem. So whenever they are coming from one ecosystem and entering into the another ecosystem, they have tendency to cause harm for this ecosystem. So they have capability to harm environment, economy and even that will lead to death for the humans. So invasive species, they mainly alter environment, they invade, they are difficult and expensive to control as well. So here this invasive species they have a capability to transform the soil structure, micro environment etc. And now let us try to see yesterday's questions the first one is regarding Ramanujacharya. 
So first statement here is individual soul created by God out of his own essence returns to its maker and lives with him forever but remains always distinct. Next one is he do not accept the God may be the exempt the form and as well as quality. Is these two statements are correct? So correct option will be C. And next one is regarding Muhammad bin Dukluk. So first one is he transferred the capital from Delhi to Dev, uh, Devgir that is Dautabad. Yes and he introduced token currency. Yes. And he increased land revenue on the farmers of Doab, especially Ganga and Emuna. Yes. And he mainly came with the launch of a scheme by which Takavi loans, that is loan for cultivation, they were given to farmers to buy seeds and extend cultivation. Yes. So these four are correct, uh, correct statements according to this uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq without regarding this Muhammad bin Tughlaq. So that option will be for all the above. And now today's questions are the first one is regarding temple architecture. So which of the following are the major works of this temple architecture? And next question is regarding, regarding this Mansab or Mansab Dads. So try to give me the correct option for these questions in the comment box. And now let us try to see a small announcement. We in Rathors as we came up with this foundation course for UPSC CSE 2023 to 2024. And the course validity is two years and we are going to provide more than 600 hours of video classes. Okay, so here in this course, I am exclusively dealing with the geography and aspects well ethics. I am the, I am the uh, core faculty of ethics and aspects well geography in this Nathos IES. So, each and every topic which is dealt with very great detail and especially regarding ethics. We discuss a concept, we discuss definition, we discuss case studies, we discuss previous mains questions and even examples to understand the concept. So that courses are very very important so please try to join the courses and if you want to take individual courses like only history, geography, economy, science and technology, international relations you can take individual courses as well. So in this way these courses are very very useful So try to join these courses and to purchase these courses you have to visit our website rathosisacademy.com and you can register with your email id later on click on course list so that you can get the number of courses that we are offering in our Rathors IS Academy. So if you want to take individual course, you can click on this buy now here below the subject. And if you want to take full foundational course, you can click on this buy now. And now we are providing offer of 15% each. So if you are, if you want to take this course after one month means we can't ensure that this price will be awarded or not. So please try to join this course. It is a very, very affordable. And if you take this foundation course, we are also going to provide one year prelims test series along with mains answer writing course also. So this will be highly beneficial. And now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our Hindu today. And actually the first article is regarding Sena leadership to meet today. So actually it is mainly talking about political turmoil in Maharashtra. And next article it is regarding abortion rights in USA. I discussed about this topic, right? And if you move forward here, Draupadi Moore, Moore Files nomination papers, I discussed this topic. And if you move forward in this uh, city page, and here you can see this article regarding this invasive weed 17 plant stifling in Kaziranga National Park. And if you move forward here, this article says that MG Narega workers, they hit states in Bengal, seek a pending wages. So this article is mainly talking about uh, people, they are mainly demanding for the pending wages under this uh, National um, National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. And also we discussed one editorial regarding this topic as well. And if you move forward in this editorial page, I discussed about this BRICS article. I discussed about this uh, NG Narega article regarding, this, uh, regarding that National Mobile Monitoring Software app. And in this open page, you can see there will be ground zero on every Saturday. So there is no need of reading this. And if you see in this newspaper, news page, you can see the ship bond weapon system, which mainly tested. So it is indigenously developed vertical launch short range surface to air missile. And it was successfully tested by DRDO and Navy. Okay. And next topic, if you move forward. You can see in this world page, that is page number 11, you can see the United Nations chief warns of food shortage. Yes, I discussed this topic. And as well as Afghanistan seek urgent medical aid, especially mainly hit with this, Af with this earthquake. And if you see in this business page, you can see an article regarding will guard rupees stability, 
RBI Spartra. So this article is also very important. So these are some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So please subscribe to Rathor's IS Academy and don't forget to like, share and comment my videos. And don't forget to enroll these courses. So if you have any queries, you can call me on this number 807-476-5513. Okay. So by this I am concluding. Thank you so much.